When Apple announced the iPhone 12 Pro lineup back in October, with all the camera improvements, they also announced one feature called Apple Pro Raw. Now, this feature might not mean much to the average user, but if you own the iPhone 12 Pro or the iPhone 12 Pro Max, then you need to know about Apple Pro Raw. And this is what this video is about. My name is Emeko Kereke of Tech Talk at EO Multimedia. I'm a visual artist and a photographer, a writer, a filmmaker, a DJ, music producer. For specific photography, I have been photographing or I've been a photographer for almost 20 years. I set up this channel as a platform for sharing my experience and knowledge with regard to the equipment and devices I use in my creative slash artistic workflow. If you're already subscribed to this channel, let me say no, which means welcome back in Igbo language, which is my mother tongue. And if you're new here, there is indeed a permanent seat reserved for you here. Just hit that subscribe button um, to become one of the foundational supporters of this steadily growing channel. All right, let's begin. When looking at digital photographs in general and mobile phone photos in particular, we are often trapped in the visual to give much thinking to the fact that these are data codes of zeros and ones compressed into a format that makes them accessible and, most importantly, perceptible to the human eye. The most common format is known as JPEG. There are other formats as well, such as Apple's HEIF, which is a, a high efficiency format aimed at reducing image file size while preserving quality. However, there is another format called RAW. Now, think of RAW file as your digital negative. You know what film negatives are to analog photography. But this only where it has to do with the amount of information the lens of the camera captures as light passes through it. JPEG files process this information and then compresses it to give a basic lightweight image file. This is what many of us are used to having in our phones. Now, the downside to this is that with compression, the color spectrum is reduced and the pixel information is somewhat fixed. That is to say, there is only very little you can do in post-production if, for instance, you want to edit the photos, uh, exposure, contrast, or the color information of the photos you have made in a JPEG format. When a photo is overexposed in a JPEG format, there is no way to bring back details in the highlight areas, for instance. The same goes for when it is underexposed. There is nothing in those black areas of your photograph, and if you try to increase the exposure, all you get is an ugly mess of grains. And oh, by the way, when you work on a JPEG file in post-production and then save it again. What you do is that you recompress it, thereby losing even more quality and details. So yes, reworking and resaving JPEG is indeed destructive. The only way to enjoy the benefits of JPEG is one or both of two situations. You have to correctly expose for the images from the onset right within the camera, or you have to have shot the photos in raw format then work on it in post-production and then finally export it in JPEG format for delivery and sharing. Now, remember, we said that RAW is like a digital negative. What this means is that all the information captured by light passing through the lens of your camera is preserved in the RAW file. Of course, this means that the RAW file has a wider color spectrum that will now come in handy when you want to push the saturation or adjust the hues of your colors. It also means that you have plenty of possibilities to rework virtually all aspects of the photos from the shadows to the mid-tones and highlights. So since the existence of the camera in the iPhone, Apple has always touted their camera system as one of, if not, the best in the market. And for the most part, this is true. But sometimes, this is also a contradiction. Take for instance, Apple has been instrumental in birthing and leading the era of computational photography. When they introduced the Pro line of phones, focusing on the power of the camera, starting with the iPhone 7 Plus, one would think that they would have introduced the raw format back then, um, especially for the Pro mobile phone photographers, whom they claimed to be making the phones for right. But no, they didn't. What happened was that third-party apps started flooding the App Store, offering to bypass Apple's inbuilt camera app to offer not only raw format, but also more advanced pro settings. So apps like Lightroom, Halide, 
Snapseed and Darkroom readily comes to mind. But computational photography is not just a slick way of describing all the photographic magic we see in recent high-end smartphones. It is also the future of mobile phone photography. And Apple is leading this leap into the future with a huge margin. So fast forward to iPhone 12 Pros, computational photography now brings the benefit of night mode, portrait mode, the LiDAR sensor, smart HDR, and deep fusion. I will not go into what all these mean. There are tons of videos out there that expands on each of the features I just mentioned. So I'll link some of them in the description below. What this means is that there's a lot that happens under the hood and all at once. The moment you press the camera shutter of your iPhone, something one of Apple's executives called computational photography mad science. And truly and seriously, it is mad science. Yet, even with the pro iPhones, Apple continues to insist on doing all the work with just the first click. This is why they've never bothered to develop a raw format until now. However, Apple's inbuilt photo processing app remains a mediocre. Any serious mobile phone photographer knows to keep at least one photo processing app uh, from a third party like Adobe's Lightroom on her iPhone or iPad for post-production. Now, the snag here though is that once you bypass Apple's camera app, you lose most of the benefits I mentioned earlier. For instance, you won't get deep fusion with your Lightroom RAW file that you made with your iPhone. And the portrait mode is a hit or miss when you want to process it inside Lightroom. These are just two examples. Now, with Apple Pro RAW, all of that changes in the best of ways. With the iOS 14.3 beta, Apple introduces its own RAW format. The benefit here is immense, chief of which is that now it preserves all those powerful computational photography features. Again, deep fusion, night mode, portrait mode, and smart HDR while giving you a raw file to adjust to the exhaustion of your creative potentials and in your own preferred post-production platform. The Apple Pro RAW is still in a better stage, but it is already proven to be the real upgrade to this year's iPhone lineup. I'm using the iPhone 12 Pro Max and Apple Pro RAW, as well as all that the phone packs in terms of the hardware, comes into full force in low light conditions. Apple's own photo processing app is still crap you know for lack of a better word so i did all my photos in adobe lightroom but then when you combine the power of diffusion with a large sense of the wide angle lens and then add to that the apple pro raw format the result is simply unbelievable for a smartphone now one would wonder what took apple so long to unlock the power of their near perfect mobile computational photography achievements where they just hardening and stalling so that they could sell us more phones in the future for something they should have given to us already some four years ago well i, I could imagine if you were still here you know steve Jobs going we are not putting that phone in the hands of the people and suddenly not calling it pro if it does not have a raw format developed by us and of course he will be speaking of the iphone 7 plus i've been out and about photographing berlin where I'm based. I made a super short video for some of the photos and videos that I made so far, which you can find somewhere there on the screen. For the most part, I have been enjoying the camera and each image still gives that wow feeling. However, it's not perfect. It seems that the iPhone's photo processing artificial intelligence tends to favor stationary people and objects than it does of moving things and people. When I look at the images on my computer, I see a lot of artifacts and in some cases, some areas don't even look like a photograph, but more like a, a mosaic collage. Also, at this better stage of the feature, Lightroom is still struggling to interpret the images properly. For instance, as soon as I import an Apple Pro RAW file into Lightroom, it becomes like two stops darker. I don't know why it's doing this. I will now have to increase the exposure exponentially, but, but thanks to the RAW format, all the information is there in the file, in the digital negative. Unfortunately, if you are not in the iOS 14.3 beta program, you will have to wait until the official release before using this feature. But I tell you, I tell you, it is worth all the wait. So that's it from me. I hope this video has been 
helpful in giving you the urge to use your phone more proactively if you've got or intend to get one of those 12 pros. If you find this video helpful, consider giving it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. You'll be helping the channel to grow. Finally, I've made some other related videos and I invite you to check them out. The link is on the screen somewhere here. Leave whatever comment you may have in the comment section. Thank you for your time and support and hope to see you in the comment section or in the next video. Kaudi, which of course translates to bye-bye in the Igbo language.